Hey, I'm Christopher JMUA and welcome back to my channel. Unless you've never been here, of course, then welcome. I'm so glad you've stopped by. Today, we are reviewing the Charlotte Tilbury Color Coded Eyeshadow Palette and the Eye Color Magic Liner Duo. This is, in fact, the first Charlotte Tilbury products I have ever reviewed on my channel. I do own one thing from Charlotte Tilbury, which is the Hollywood Beauty Light Wand. Beautiful, might I add. I'm gonna be using this during this video as well. And I also got a sample size of the Charlotte Tilbury Legendary Lashes Volume 2 Instant Volume and Lengthening Miracle Mascara. Gonna also try this out today to see what it's all about while I try the main stars of the show, the palette and the eyeliner. These just released and I saw them on Trend Mood. Thank you so much, Sophie, for sharing these because I don't know, they were just drawing me in. I don't know if it's this quarantine that's making me want to review more things or if it's just me being excited about the new things that are coming out. But I saw this palette and I was super stoked to give it a shot and to show you guys what it looks like what it swatches like, and how it performs. So if you're curious about those things as well, and you want to know what it looks like, what it swatches like, and how it performs, then stay exactly where you are, keep doing exactly what you're doing, and keep on watching. Okay guys, I'm gonna try this new thing where I read the description from the website while I unbox the product and show you what it looks like. That means I can do two things at once and save some time. So I ordered these from Sephora, so that's the description I'm gonna be reading, and the palette was $53. A little pricey, I know. It also comes in four different color stories. There's Copper Charge, which has a champagne, a rose copper, a russet brown, and a peach gold. It comes in super blue, which I was actually going to get, but I was trying to stay towards something I would use more often. With spending this much on a four pan palette, I really needed it to be something that that I was going to love, absolutely love. So that's why I stuck with the one that I did. Super Blue has Champagne Gold, Rich, Navy, and Radiant Blue. And then Green Lights, which is Golden Olive and Khaki. I don't know why it's not telling me all the shades that are in all of them, but whatever. They're all $53 also. And now let's see what it looks like. As you can see, I got the color story Mesmerizing Maroon. It is a luxury palette, as the package says, and it shows its color-coded eyeshadows and Charlotte Tilbury logo, which is beautiful, darling. Then on the back, it shows the four shades that are in it. It's got the Prime Shade, the Enhance Shade, the Smoke Shade, and the Pop Shade because every Charlotte Tilbury palette is almost like an instructional palette, which is cool. And now the description from Sephora's website says, what is it? A limited edition four-step eyeshadow quad with a buildable, non-creasing formula and pigmented shades to amplify your eye color. What else do you need to know? For her limited edition eye color magic collection, Charlotte has decided the color wheel to enhance the magic of your eye color. Select the shade opposite to your iris's natural hue to ignite your eyes and make them pop. Make blue eyes look bluer with copper charge. Make brown eyes look amber with super blue. Make green eyes look greener with mesmerizing maroon. Make hazel eyes look gold with green lights. So the point of these palettes was to amplify your eye color. Oh, that fingerprint looks so gross. But the package without it looks beautiful. Gonna go ahead and open it up. There is no plastic protective piece. And here is the $53 palette itself. That means each one of these shades is $13.25. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Now let's swatch. So we have the Prime Shade. Oh wow, that is super soft. Wow. The Enhance Shade, the Smoke Shade, and the Pop Shade. Prime, Enhance, Smoke, and Pop. Okay, there's all four shades. I will go ahead and insert photos of the swatches, one with flash here. And one without flash here. And here's a little video close up for you guys to see the shades. That is a foil if I have ever seen one. My goodness. 
Then the next product is the Matte and Metallic Double Ended Eyeliner. This pairs with these eyeshadow palettes specifically, or they launch at the same time. And this eyeliner was $30. But it's kind of like a two for one. So really it's like $15 for each one, I guess, if you wanted to look at it kind of silver lining type way, you know? This comes in three color stories, Mesmerizing Maroon, of course, which I got to match the eyeshadow palette rather than contrast like I could have done. It also comes in Copper Charge and Super Blue. I guess Copper Charge could be used for the copper and the other one. Then with the packaging, looks just like the packaging for the Mesmerizing Maroon eyeshadow palette. It's still that purpley type color kind of ombre from dark to light purple and back it has the ingredients and the ingredients in another language on the other side I believe yes it says do not use inside the eyes as a disclaimer on the side of it that's good to know because I was going to put this on my waterline I probably still will put this on my waterline honestly then the description on Sephora's website says what is it? a long wear waterproof matte and metallic duo pencil to emphasize and amplify your eye color what else you need to know these pigmented matte and metallic shades are infused with emollient oils and natural waxes for easy glide and a gel like application select the shade opposite to your irises natural hue to ignite your eyes and make them pop Ugh, I can't even open it Wow, Let's try the other side first. Oh my goodness, okay. Whew. So it looks like the matte side is here. Yes, very maroon, that is so soft. It's a very dark purple, really. I literally cannot get this off. <laughs> okay, so here's the metallic side. I feel like that's a lot more oily. Oh, what the heck? Well, at least you can see the color. So it is definitely metallic on the other side, the more maroony side. It's kind of hard to see the reflection that it has, but I feel like that would be a really beautiful base for this palette because it kind of gives a nice even sheen of that tone. It looks pretty. I'm excited to use it. And the last product that we're going to be using is the Charlotte Tilbury Legendary Lashes Darling Volume 2 Mascara. It is a volumizing thickening mascara with an instant Hollywood false lash effect. I'll be the judge of that because I have some false lashes from Midas Cosmetics in the style Poseidon that I'm going to be using today. Unless this mascara just blows my mind and makes it look like I'm wearing falsies, then I'm not going to be wearing any falsies. But this mascara for the full size is $32 for the mini. I just got it as like an add-on for ordering the products I did. So I don't know if you can just find the mini somewhere, but this is what I picked out. Also. We're gonna be trying something else that I just got, but it is not part of Charlotte Tilbury or like a review or anything. I just wanna use it today. And that's gonna be the brand new NARS Paradise Laguna Bronzer Powder Jumbo. Yes, Jumbo. This is really, really big. This was $45 and I'm gonna read the description for it because it's new and I wanna show you guys what it looks like. So it's like a mini review. An oversized Laguna bronzing powder housed in a special limited edition compact. And that's it. There was actually a lip balm and an oil infused lip tint in this Laguna collection. And there was also, I think a regular bronzer and a mini bronzer, but this was the only thing I wanted. Oh my goodness, look at this packaging. I love NARS packaging so much. That is so cool. Wow. And since it's so blah, 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 e, whenever I put fingerprints on it, you can't really tell because it is so blah, 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 e. And this is what it looks like on the inside. Ooh, oh, look at that. Wow. It's got like gold glitter at the bottom of it. I didn't realize it was gold glitter. I thought it was like gold shimmer, but that's fine. I'll survive. It is really, really pretty though. I'm really excited. And it's a really big size mirror in it. I like that. What is that smell? Mmm, it's making me hungry. What is that? It smells so good. I'm gonna figure out what that smell is because it's amazing. But the Charlotte Tilbury palette also had a pretty decent size mirror in it for it being such a teeny tiny palette. I forgot to show you guys, but it takes up the whole back of it. It better for $52. No, I'm just kidding. I'm the one who was willing to spend $52 on this palette. So that's what we're gonna be finding out during this video is if that palette was worth $52. The NARS bronzer, I just really wanted as a collector's item that I'm going to be using because it looks so pretty and I love it. And now I love it even more because I know what it smells like. 
Sorry, I don't know what it smells like, but I know that it smells good. I'm going to figure out what the scent is. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and prime my eyes off camera so we can get ready to use this eyeshadow palette and I will be right back. All right, eyes are primed. And listen, if you guys have been sleeping on the Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas Eye Base, stop. Seriously, stop. If you use an eye base, no, even if you don't use an eye base, you've got to try this. I'm not the youngest person in the whole wide world, obviously. This stuff makes my eyelid look like it's the youngest person in the world's eyelid. It makes everything super smooth. It makes a beautiful tone. I mean, look, you can see my left eye, which is like normal, and my right eye, which is primed. It looks like this is how my eye should look. I wish my eye looked like this. This shows how much discoloration on my eyes I actually have, but it also shows how much better it looks covered up. <laughs> I love this. This is beautiful. But anyway, I had to just toot the clean canvas eye base because it's amazing and I love the results that it gives. Anyway, I digress. So I went to Charlotte Tilbury's website, which has the instructions on how she recommends to use this palette. And for $53, I'm going to use this palette how she recommends to use it. So what Charlotte, darling, I don't know why I need to say darling every time, but what Charlotte says to do is first use the prime shade to glid the eye with a shimmering champagne pink. I don't know what glid the eye means. The dictionary says that glid is just a past tense form of glide, but shade the glide, shade to glide the eye with a shim, no, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't matter, I'm just gonna slide it across the eye. I guess I'm gonna start by using the Morphe X Jeffree Star JS11 flat packing brush and go into the shade Prime. This is so different from what I would ever do. I don't know how to start with a shimmer. I just don't understand. Ooh, it's very pretty though. It's definitely not like a metallic shade, which we could see that from the swatch. We know it's not. Now I'm assuming this just goes all over the lid because there's a matte shade that I'm guessing gets blown out in the crease. I don't really know what I'm doing here. I'm just following instructions. Okay, I'm gonna make the cookie cutter look that I'm told to make. Okay, I'm primed. That is a really, really pretty color. It is pretty much my skin tone with some shine to it. Next, the instructions say, then blend the rich metallic amethyst enhance shade across the lid to capture the light and add dreamy definition. Across the lid, but I already added this shade to the lid. Why aren't there pictures? I need pictures to follow the instructions. You know what, for the sake of what I think it means on the first step, I'm gonna take the prime shade up a little bit higher than just my lid because I feel like I'm about to cover up the prime shade completely because I only put it on the lid. So I'm gonna take it up like, I don't know, just higher. Gonna blow it out a little bit more. Just feel like it's gonna disappear once I go in with the next shade. Okay, she's definitely taken up higher now. So next, I'm going to use this Morphe Shader Flat Brush, just like the other one, but more fluffy, I guess. And now I'm gonna use the Enhance Shade. And that one goes only on the lid, she says. That actually makes quite an interesting effect by having that shimmer underneath it to start with. It's like I don't have to go in and correct an inner corner or an outer corner edge where the shimmer doesn't touch because there's already shimmer there. It was kind of like putting the step that I would do at the end up front and it almost lessens the effect of that shade. It makes it much less potent. I guess, than what it would be without that color underneath it because it's sort of diffusing it out and mixing in with the other shade, which makes sense. And I'm just filling this in everywhere my lid is because that's what Charlotte said to do. I'm just following Mother Charlotte's suggestion. Queen Charlotte. Ooh, I kind of blew that out a little much. A lot of fallout with that, surprisingly. I didn't really see that happening in the pan when I went to pick it up, but I do on my face, which that's probably because I wasn't tapping off any excess and I was really trying to pack it on because it was sort of disappearing being on top of that other shade. But now I have this really weird edge in my crease 
where the enhanced shade is meeting the prime shade. So I'm gonna use the JS11 and go back into the prime shade just real quick, just to diffuse that edge a little bit. Cause I feel like it's sort of intense and I don't really like the intensity of it. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, that was easy to fix. Boom, got it. Next, Charlotte says, step three, apply the matte plum smoke shade to the eye crease and along the upper and lower lash lines using the eye smudger brush. I don't have her eye smudger brush, but I do have my eye smudger brush. So she wants me to put it in the crease with my eye smudger brush as well. Now I am going to use my BH Cosmetics number 10 brush from the Take Me Back to Brazil brush collection. This is just really an angled flat brush. You can pretty much use anything like this if you're gonna, I don't know, create this look. Or you could even duplicate this look with dupe eyeshadows if you have them. I don't know if the effect would be exactly the same, but you can try it. Why not? You know, I am also going to be using my Morphe E36 bullet blender brush or pencil blender brush to smoke this out on the lower lash line as well. I'm also going to make sure that I apply a little bit of my eye base, to my lower lash line. Typically, as my usual blending beauties know, I go in with my concealer before I finish off the lower lash line. But since it's saying to use it right now, I'm going to use it right now and my clean canvas eye base makes a great under eye concealer as well. So I'm good, no worries. Oh, still have lots of fallout though. I look so much more awake now that I have that eye base under my eye. Mm, love that. Okay, I'm gonna start by using the smoke shade on my lower lash line first because I just put the eye base down and I don't want any creasing to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Oh man, that is a beautiful shade. And it takes like this much, this much. Yes, literally that much. Change of plans, I'm not using the angled flat brush. I think I'm just going to use this brush only. I'm liking how it's laying product down and still blending it out. I do have to use something a little bit bigger for the crease though, because I need matte color to be blown out in my crease. I don't know what she's going for with those instructions. But I gotta do it just a little bit different. So that I maintain my smaller sections while working, I'm gonna use the Morphe M321 brush. It's a pointed blender brush and use that smoke shade, but in my crease. Here we go. That is just a beautiful color. Wow, that's really nice. I'm gonna take it up a little bit higher just to make it look like my eyes a little bit bigger. You know, why not? I don't have to follow her instructions exactly. I mean, did you always listen to mom growing up? These blend like a dream. I barely have to touch them and they blend out. This is really nice. Okay, well that's the that on that. What's the next step? Step four, finish with a pop of shimmering mauve purple eyeshadow on the center of the lid. It says center, but it's like C-E-N-T-R-E. -E. So center of the lid. So pop is number four. So let's use our ring finger for shade four because I think Charlotte does that a lot. And we're gonna go Ooh, at first I didn't think anything happened, but when I look closely, it definitely happened. Let me try to target that a little more toward the center. There we go. That is beautiful. Okay, and there we have the shadow look. It's cute. It's very Charlotte Tilbury, that's for sure. If you don't know, Charlotte Tilbury makeup is very like model makeup. It's like adding to your natural beauty that very soft glammy type makeup you know the very clean subtle natural beautiful type makeup not my skin you know now very quickly before i move on i do want to take the fluffier brush onto my lower lash line and just smoke this shade out a little bit more because i feel like it's not quite as smoky as i want that's a little better once i get my face makeup done i will go in and finesse that a little bit more but for now, let's move on to the Mesmerizing Maroon Magic Liner Duo. I don't know for sure. Let me see if she has instructions for this as well. I'm curious if she gives a step-by-step. -step. Oh, I should have got the Feline Flick Liquid Liner as well. It says, oh, it has a little video tutorial of how to put on eyeliner. Oh. Okay, that wasn't anything special. They use the metallic side to fill in the liner on the actual lash line. Then they use the matte side to fill in the inner corner and the wing on the outer corner and then blend it in to make like an ombre effect. 
Okay, well cool. I like that. I like that. I'm cool with that. Let's do that. It does have a how-to section as well. The how-to section says apply the matte end of your eyeliner to the outer half of your upper lash line to add shape, depth, and definition. Step two, use the metallic end in your inner corners and along the lower and upper lash line to make the eyes look bigger, brighter, and more mesmerizing, which makes sense because you're drawing light to it so it pulls it forward. Step three, wear these magical eyeliner duos alone for a sultry pop of color or with the matching eye color magic luxury eyeshadow palette in mesmerizing maroon. Okay, cool. So those were actually kind of open suggestions, like open-ended suggestions, I guess. It's kind of telling you do what you will with it. I'm gonna do what the little video said or suggested or showed or whatever, where we use the metallic on the lash line and then use the matte on the inner corner and the outer corner for the little wing and make a cute little wing for this. Now I am going to use the brush that I previously put up so that I can create the wing shape show. Let's use the metallic side first. After I sharpen it, already this is gonna break my heart. I'm so sorry, pencil. I'm so sorry. I do think the next time I use this pencil, I am going to try and use the metallic or maybe even the matte side of this pencil as a base because I think it would truly make a beautiful base. It feels just slightly tacky, not enough to slide around everywhere, but enough to have products stick to it. And I think that would be really, really great for some of these shimmers that are in this palette. Wow, that is so creamy. It has virtually no tug on the lid. Wow, that was so impressive. Oh my gosh. I kind of think that I want to collect these, like more than just this color. Oh, I wish they weren't $30 each. That's so pricey, but they're so nice. Okay, now the matte side. It's kind of odd to me that it's not the same color. Like why not be a metallic purple and a matte purple or a metallic maroon and a matte maroon? It's fine, I can deal with it, but it's just kind of odd. Mm, this side's not going on quite as creamy. Oh, it's because I'm going over the other color. Never mind. Okay, it is. Okay, the matte side is not nearly as glidey as the metallic side. It's working. It's applying color. It just tugs a lot more. Man, that's kind of disappointing because that metallic side blew my mind. Okay, built up the color. It's not really pretty yet, but I'm hoping I can fix that with a brush and let's see if I can. It's kind of funny. With the metallic liner on the lash line, you can't really see it because it's so close to the enhanced shade that's in the palette, the bottom right one or bottom left one. The one that I was supposed to use to pop the color on the lid. In hindsight, it probably would have been a little bit more intelligent of me on my part to put the matte shade all over the lash line instead, but we're here, we're doing it. It's not really movable with the brush, or maybe the shadow is just mixing with it so much. The video that I'm watching, the way that they're doing the application there, there is no shadow there at all. They're just working with a liner on clean skin. So clean skin. So that would probably aid in being able to move the liner around a little bit, obviously. I'm gonna try to build it up here just a little bit more, see what happens. I did go ahead and pull the matte shade all the way from the outer corner into the inner corner and I really, really like the effect that it had. I feel like it almost finished off the look in the way that I really wanted it to. I couldn't see the metallic side. I think for me, the metallic side is gonna be better used for something that's either a contrasting color so it really shows up or even by itself. I think that will be really, really pretty by itself because I think it would really give a beautiful look just in itself, like I said. Anyway, I think it was perfect by creating the wing with the matte shade fully. It added the pigmency and it just looks great, I think. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate what's on this eye to the other eye. And while I'm gone, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off my face makeup off camera so that I can just go ahead and get all of that done and wrap it up. Then we will come back and try the Charlotte Tilbury Legendary Lashes Volume 2 Mascara. And I will show you guys what the results were from the NARS Laguna Bronzer. I'm super excited to use this and super excited to see what it looks like. I did read that the gold sparkly shimmery stuff is an overspray, which I am kind of excited about because I don't like glitter in my face products, as a lot of you know. So I'm hoping that that will disappear quickly. I'm sure I'm gonna have gold glittery pieces on my face today, which is not fine, but like, you know, whatever for now. Anyway, I digress. I'm gonna go ahead and do all of that off camera and I will be right back. We are now back with the face done. The NARS bronzer is beautiful. 
I was very scared of the gold glitter, like I said I was. So I actually went in with the gold glitter first and got it all over the brush and put it on my neck, but you can't see it anywhere. But it literally just like sloughed off the moment I put the brush on it. So the gold glitter is gone. The beautiful fade is gone. Now we just have the bronzer and you can tell up here-ish the bronzer shade and kind of down here. It's a tad tiny bit yellowy, like golden yellowy. I guess maybe the gold on top insinuated that. But it does give a slight golden glow to the skin, which I love because it's getting summertime and I love that vacation bronze. I just, oh, I love the way it looks. It's beautiful. But I ended up covering up my lower lash line with concealer when I went in with concealer. So we are going to go back in with the same shade smoke on the lower lash line with the same brush, the Morphe M321. However, I am gonna take the matte eyeliner and just lightly and gently go right on the lower lash line on the outer edges. Make a really thin line with this. I kind of really wanna put this in my water line, even though it said not to. Kinda of wanna break the rules. Should we break the rules? Ooh, see, even just that is so gorgeous. It ties in the wing and brings it even further in. Maybe I should connect it out here. Ah, love it. That is so pretty. I like that a lot. Yeah, this is really nice. I like this. I'm doing it. Here we go. Ooh, it looks a lot more red on the waterline. Huh, and I really want to try and make sure that I fill in the gap between my lash line and my lower lash line, but my lashes are too thick. I can't get the pencil through them. Oh well, that's okay. Now it's time to take the smoke shade and the M321 brush. And I'm just gonna pack this all on top of the liner and just start smoking it out. Can you see that? Can you see that? Oh, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. I am so completely obsessed with this. I do, however, want to add a little thump thump to the brow bone because I feel like it's kind of lacking any kind of punch, I guess. So I want to use the prime shade, the first one, and the same brush that I used before, just the JS10. And I want to add that shade to my brow bone. I feel like it's going to kind of kick it up just a notch. Give me a little bit of gleam up there. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Maybe a lot of gleam up there. That's what I was looking for. That's nice. Oh. Charlotte, what have you done? Okay, eyeshadow is all the way done and ugh, love it. Let's move on to mascara because it's gonna be the deciding factor if we're gonna be using these lashes today or not. I'm gonna use them soon anyway. Just a matter of if I use them today. Gonna go ahead and curl my lashes first. Lashes are curled and here we go. It's got quite a long applicator. It's not what it's called, but spoolie. It's got a long spoolie. It's a very scattered spoolie, not very symmetrical. It is very asymmetrical, getting good coverage. I didn't curl my lashes very well. Probably should have knowing we were working with a new mascara, but whatever, what's done is done. Um, well, upon initial application, that looks really, really nice. That looks like I have lashes on. Can you tell? Can you see? I feel like the way my camera's lined up, you can only see like straight. They look good. I like them a lot. Man, I was kind of really excited to use these lashes. Okay, first coat impressions. It's bomb. It's really bomb. I'm gonna put a second coat on and just see what happens. I'm not normally a double or triple coater. I'm normally just a once over, throw my lash on. But I don't normally only wear mascara either. I typically always put on lashes. So, ow. I want to see what happens if I try to build it up. It's very lengthening, but I'm not sacrificing any volume by adding that length. It's doing both in a good way. It's not getting clumpy at all. It's keeping my lashes separated still. So it looks like I actually have lashes and not just clumps of lash. I'm also really liking the wand because it's keeping the lashes separate every time I roll through them. 
Now I'm not noticing a huge difference between a single or double application. I mean, I can tell a difference, like I added a little more volume, it looks like, but it's not a lot. I don't think it's enough to really matter. I am really enjoying the way this looks, like a lot. Obviously, not gonna be wearing lashes today because I'm completely satisfied with this. Also, I forgot to tell you guys, the lip that I'm wearing today is the Gerard Cosmetics Lip Pencil in the shade Underground. That's the deep purpley mauve tone, which is beautiful, and the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lipstick. I have tried the lipstick before. I actually got it on my trip to Los Angeles, California and went to the actual Charlotte Tilbury store, which was amazing. I had no idea there even was a Charlotte Tilbury store. Anyway, got it there and have loved it ever since. I got that and the Pillow Talk Lip Liner, which is great also, but if you're going for the only nude look, I wanted that darker lip liner to pair with the darker eyeliner. I thought it was a good mix. Anyway, let's apply mascara to the lower lip lash line now and get a bunch of mascara all over my under eye because that's what I do. Curious to see how this is going to apply down here. Whew, they got some girth. <laughs> oh, that spot in the inner corner makes it look like I have a really big lash there. I don't, I promise. I feel like I can handle big wands so much better than I can handle little wands. It's like with little wands, there's just not enough leverage to them and I can't make them do what they're supposed to do the best way. But a little wand gets the job done, that's for sure. Now, just gotta see how much it's going to transfer, if it does. It already did transfer onto this part of my under eye, but that's because it's not dry yet and whenever I emote, my lashes touch my under eye. That's just kind of a normal thing for me anyway. And that's why I need to make sure that I don't emote until my mascara dries. With my lower lashes having the same amount of girth as my upper lashes, that now concludes the look. So what do you guys think? Do you love it? I'm actually quite fond of it. I was sort of skeptical going into it because, okay, this is, I feel like this is very controversial when it comes to luxury products because as we all know, luxury products have a luxury price tag and $52 for a four pan eyeshadow palette is kind of insane, kind of extreme. And I was going into this thinking that and knowing that. And okay, don't get me wrong, I still think that $13.25 per shade is very expensive but it made a really beautiful look. Do I think that this is easily dupable? Yeah, you could easily do this. Same exact look for probably pennies a shade. I probably have these exact same shades in my collection, but it is worth noting that the formula I felt and worked with is unlike anything that I have. The way that the attention to detail was put into each shimmer shade for each step that it was created for was ingenious in my opinion. You could tell by the swatches that each shimmer was delegated for a different step. And for the fact of Charlotte Tilbury's brand being created for the way that she does makeup and the way that she forms her routine as a makeup artist, I think it's phenomenal. And I really think it's a cool concept. And I think that you're not only paying for that formula and that attention to detail, but also for the name and brand of Charlotte Tilbury and the packaging of Charlotte Tilbury. So all in all for the eyeshadow palette, I feel like if you vibe with all that is Charlotte Tilbury and you feel like the shades in this palette emphasize the eye color that you have and you want to experience that, then sure, I would recommend it because there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But I also don't think that anyone should just be dropping 53 bucks on four eyeshadow shades unless you're ready for that, unless you are willing and are, I guess, knowingly capable of doing that because it's a lot of money to just pay for a quad. But in my opinion, it was worth it. And I kind of want the green one because I think the green one would be really, really pretty, especially with having green eyes. I think it would pair nicely, but that's me. That's my opinion. Then for the, then for the eye color magic liner duo, I would pick this before I would pick the eyeshadow palette. Actually, I really, really like this. I love liners period. I love gel liners. I love gel pot 
liners, I love liquid liners. I, I love all liners. I think that they are very versatile. I think that they are very colorful. I think that you can use them for many, many different things because they're versatile, like I said. But this is really cool. This is $15 per liner, in my opinion, because it's $30 for a whole one, and you get a matte and a metallic. So it's even more versatile because you get two in one, and it matches the eyeshadow palette perfectly. I was kind of taken aback at the fact that it was two different colors because I thought it was gonna be a matte and a metallic of the same tone, but I'm actually glad it's not because I feel like I can work with this more than I could if it was a matte and a metallic of the same color because it gives me more options. I love that Charlotte made it so that it pairs with the palette in the sense that you can make eyes look smaller with the darker side or make eyes look bigger with the metallic side. I think it's really cool how she made this collection where it does all work together like that. And I really want to build my collection of these liners because I think this is really, really cool. Then the legendary lashes, as long as the wear time on this doesn't end up with with a bunch of flakes under my eyes. I love this so far. The application of it is gorgeous and my lashes look so full. They are voluptuous, they are lengthened, they are holding their curl well. They look pretty bomb, <laughs> honestly. Like I'm kind of I'm kind of taken aback at how good they look. Anyway, that's enough from me. Now, I want to know what you guys think. Do you think $52 for four eyeshadow pans is ridiculous? If so, I understand. And let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know what you think about the eyeliner. Do you agree? Do you think it's a versatile thing or do you think it's too expensive and just a waste of money? You guys know at this point that I love to have a conversation with you, so just leave me a comment. I will talk back. If I don't talk back, I will at least leave you a heart. Also, if you like this look and you want to see more looks like them, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. My username is the same for everything. It's just Christopher JMUA. And if you gain nothing out of this video, if you gain nothing out of any of my videos, please at least gain this. And that is to always remember and never forget that you are absolutely beautiful. And I love you guys. Bye.